All right, it's a great pleasure to introduce uh, Alona Pirutka. Alona is uh, one of the best representatives of both uh, Soviet and uh, French schools. And today she is going to tell us with a little bit of a uh, New York spice about variational geometry and lunar K theory. Alona. Hi, uh, Yannick yeah, Thank you so much for this, for this very kind uh, introduction. Uh, thank you. And uh, thank you for inviting me to this uh, uh, wonderful workshop. Uh, so I will uh, talk about uh, rationality from the point of view of uh, reconstruction of function fields of algebraic varieties and uh, with connections to Milner K theory. Uh, here is the plan. So I'll start by recalling uh, the classical Noether problem and the uh, 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 questions. And then I'll explain uh, how Milner K theory arises in this context. And then I'll discuss some reconstruction results. Uh, and I will also talk about some details uh, of uh, proofs. Um, OK. So the classical question is to know what is uh, what, what, what can be determined by uh, Galo type data. Uh, this includes in particular inverse Gallo problem, Noether problem, and uh, other reconstruction questions. So uh, let's uh, talk about all this in more details. So first, uh, for the classical inverse Gallo problem, uh, we would like to know which finite groups G can be uh, realized as Gallo groups of an extension over the field of rational numbers. So it is a very well known problem and uh, in general it is open. So some results are known, in particular the answer is yes for groups that can be realized as Gallo groups of a purely transcendental extension of the field of rational numbers. And this goes back to Hilbert. Uh, then, if we take a finite group G and if we look at V, uh, uh, representation of this group over field K, uh, then G is the Gala group of the field extension of, over the um, uh, field of invariance. So, in particular, if the field of invariance is a purely transcendental extension of the base field K, and if we take the rationals as uh, the base field, uh, then one can apply the Hilbert theorem and to conclude then that G is a Gala group over Q. So in this way, uh, we have a natural connection with uh, questions uh, on uh, rationality of the quotient V um, or J, uh, or, this, mm, whether, or the question to know whether this field um, is purely transcendental over Q. Uh, also in general, uh, we have a theorem of Shekharevich who showed that any solvable finite group is a, a Gala group over Q. Okay, so let's talk about the second po point here, the uh, Noether's problem uh, more in details. So the question then is to know uh, if V is a, a linear uh, faithful representation of a finite group G over the field K when uh, the uh, field of invariance is the purely transcendental extension of K. Um, okay, so this is uh, quite an active area of research um, and some, they, they, it's known that the, in general the answer is no, it's not necessarily, the quotient is not necessarily rational. Uh, so I have here some counterexamples. First, for algebraically closed uh, field, Saltman gave uh, an example uh, where the quotient is not rational uh, for G, a group of order a prime number L power nine. Uh, then uh, Bogomolov um, gave an example where G was a finite uh, group of order power, uh, L power six. And quite recently, Maravets uh, was able to do it for a smaller groups of order L power five. And there so are all, all, all these examples are solvable groups, right? Uh, yeah, but there are uh, there are more. Yeah, so we are here over algebraic closed field for this uh, for this example, and then we have also 
uh, counterexamples for uh, k um, the field of rational numbers. So in some sense, they do nothing for the original uh, problem, right? For, uh, I mean, for the yeah, so here we switch to the just to the case where we all over algebraic equals field, right? Um, Okay, so I also wanted to say that uh, the, um, um, there are more examples here for uh, nonlinear actions. Uh, and just this morning, there was a, a, an article on archive by Hoshi, I guess, on this subject. Uh, so coming back to the question uh, of um, um, rationality of this quotient over the field of rational numbers, uh, there are examples of Swan and Vaskrisansky uh, where the group G is C mod 47, and uh, also about Seipel and Voskresensky, where G is a uh, final group Z mod 8. Um, okay. Now, um, more generally, um, one is interested uh, to know how much can be um, determined uh, by the information coming from absolute Galois group of a field K. Um, or could one reconstruct the basic field from its Galois theoretic invariants? So this uh, uh, goes back also to an abelian conjectures uh, of Grothendieck in the context of curves, where um, the question, uh, the the questions were to recover um, from the uh, fundamental group. Okay, so some results in this direction. Um, so let's denote GK, the absolute Galois group of the field K. So first, uh, from Art and Shire, we know that if uh, GK is a finite and non-trivial group, then uh, we know exactly that GK must be Z mod two, uh, and K is the field of real numbers or more generally real closed. And of course here GK and GR is uh, very easy to understand. So uh, if we look at um, the um, uh, periodic uh, field or QP, uh, the group, uh, the Gala group is uh, also understood uh, but it's much more complicated, so I decided not to, to put it here. There are results by Jakob Lespoitou, uh, Janssen, Winberg, and others. Um, okay, so now more generally. Uh, oh yeah, there was also example of uh, Perlis, who showed that there are non-isomorphic field extensions of, of the field of rational numbers uh, with the same dedicated set of functions. So the reason I put it here is just to give you an example where this uh, local data uh, does not determine uh, the field and the field extension of Q particular. Um, okay. Now, um, more generally, uh, Uchida uh, showed that uh, in the, for the, for the for global field, uh, the entire Galois group uh, characterizes uh, the uh, global field. And Pope uh, generalized this to arbitrary fields. Um, so there is a group theoretical recipe uh, to recover uh, a finitely generated infinite fields from their entire absolute Gala group GK. So I will not uh, uh, give more details on this. Uh, and um, I, will, um, I would like to um, to discuss um, when uh, what can be uh, what can be reconstructed from uh, not from the entire Galois group GK but from some partial information. So in this previous results, uh, um, okay, one can uh, get the field K from the entire uh, group GK, but often it is too large and difficult to understand. Uh, so instead, then, uh, one would like to look at maybe a much smaller uh, set of data. Uh, and this set of data will be encoded in this uh, uh, GC defined below. Um, so let's look at uh, L, uh, at, at, uh, let's take L prime different from characteristic of K. 
and consider a probable completion of the absolute Galois group GK, look at abelianization and the canonical central extension. Uh, so the Bogomolov and Abelian program is to determine the field K from GA and GC, so from this smaller amount of data. And there are reconstruction results for finitely generated fields over, uh, particularly over FP bar, the algebraic closure of a finite field by Bogomolov, Chinkel, Pop, Tapas, and others. Uh, so uh, I just want to comment on this uh, construction of GA and GC. So in the case when G is a finite group, this, um, like looking at the uh, abelianization and the canonical central extension uh, appeared uh, in a, a formula by Fyodor Bogomolov to compute the uh, unramified Brouwer group for a quotient uh, um, V mod G, where V is uh, um, a, a linear representation of G. So I just want to uh, give uh, two comments. Uh, so first one is about this unramified Brouwer group. Uh, it is a birational invariant, uh, and um, recently it was used um, a lot uh, in the context of uh, specialization method uh, to establish uh, non-stable rationality for varieties. So this, um, so uh, there's a connection to uh, lectures by Claire Voisin on this model. Uh, then uh, also um, the questions to know if we, uh, the, the, the quotient uh, here is a uh, um, rational varieties and active area, and then there are still uh, many open questions there. Uh, so there are also new invariants uh, that um, have been developed by Crash uh, uh, and Schinkel uh, uh, based on, um, I guess, the so-called equivariant Burnside group. And this could also be potentially invariants to uh, understand the rationality of this quotient imaging. Um, okay, so um, this somehow provides a connection uh, of this uh, um, um, of this setting where you have G A and G C uh, to uh, other problems in uh, uh, rationality and other invariants. Uh, so why uh, it is important for us? Uh, well, because we will be interested uh, um, in the reconstruction from K theory. Uh, and the K theory, K1 and K2, could be viewed as discrete analogs of this GA and GC. Okay, so now uh, let me introduce then this uh, uh, context uh, um, of Miller K theory and the uh, reconstruction from it. Um, okay. Uh, so I just recall that if F is a field, then we have uh, the Milner K ring, uh, where you look at symbols uh, um, uh, and in um, just uh, invertible elements in the field, um, and uh, you have one relation, um, one more relation of this type uh, in degree two, uh, a one minus a. This symbol is zero. Um, so we will view it as a discrete analog of the reconstruction from Galois data. So I put just one example for K1. Uh, K1 here is just the, uh, the, multiplic the multiplicative group um, of F, so uh, invertible elements in, in the field. Now, on the other hand, if you have the Galois group, then you can look at Galois cohomology. And the Galois cohomology by Kummer theory in degree one will give you um, um, the invertible elements mod uh, L power N powers, if you look here at mu LN, and taking the inverse limit, you obtain uh, the completion uh, of uh, F. So GK somehow gives you this uh, pro object, and K1 gives you already um, the discrete object that sits there, F star. So that's why I would like to uh, view it as a, a discrete analog of the Gala data. Um, okay, uh, now we will be interested in the following question. 
So uh, what can be uh, reconstructed from the uh, data of Milner case here? In other words, uh, we'd like to know if the Milner K ring determines uh, the isomorphism class of a field F. Uh, okay, so um, if I tell, if I just ask this question, then maybe some of you know the answers. Uh, so the first answer is uh, no in general. So in general, it's not true. Um, so in particular, I put here one um, um, concrete example. If you take two solvably closed uh, ex uh, subfields uh, of an algebraic closure of Q, so this means that I have uh, uh, M's roots of uh, elements in those fields. And then one can prove, so um, there's something to prove, but it's, uh, uh, okay, so that's, uh, it's not hard, uh, that K2 Milner is trivial. So then we only need to look at K1. Uh, so K1 is uh, uh, here in this case, uh, is uh, decomposed as a torsion subgroup and Q to the Z, because F E star in this case is divisible and countable. Divisible because these fields are solvably closed and countable because they in Q bar. So in general, you compute it this way. Uh, and then it gives you just the, uh, the torsion in, in Q bar, um, just the roots of unity and uh, um, this uh, Q to the Z. So this K1 um, then for those two fields have the same structure, uh, yet the fields do not are not necessarily isomorphic. Okay, so this is in general, and we will be interested uh, in um, uh, finitely generated uh, field extensions of algebraically closed to finite fields. So we're interested to know if one can determine the ring, uh, the, 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 one can determine the field from the um, uh, Milner K ring. Um, and uh, uh, then the answer is yes. Um, if you take a, a function field of an algebraically closed to a finite field of transcendence degree, at least two. So in characteristic zero, this was proved by Bogomolov and Shinka. And in positive characteristic, uh, uh, this is a joint work with uh, Anna Kadori. And so I'm going to, uh, to talk uh, more about uh, uh, this um, uh, positive characteristic case um, just in a moment. Okay, so before we do that, I wanted to discuss two other uh, questions um, on a, a general reconstruction. Um, uh, properties. So again, for the same question, come on Milner K ring. There are also works by Topaz, uh, where he has reconstruction results from mod L uh, Milner K rings. Um, where so this is like a smaller um, amount of data. It's just mod L Milner K rings. Uh, however, those must be enriched with some additional data, the so-called rational quotients. Uh, in order to get the reconstruction results. Uh, and this um, works for finitely generated field extensions of transcendence degree at least five uh, over an uh, algebraically closed fields. Mm -hmm. um, okay, so I also wanted to uh, finish this uh, uh, overview section on uh, recent re uh, results uh, on topological reconstruction. So now um, consider the case when X is a smooth uh, projective variety of a field K, uh, then the general question would be to know uh, how to reconstruct X from the topological uh, space. Uh, so in other words, um, what is an additional structure uh, one would like to add uh, to this topological space to obtain X. So this question was recently studied by Kohler, Leibniz, Olson, mm -hmm. and Savin. So they obtain, uh, in particularly, that if K is an infinite field, uh, then if you take um, uh, this topological space, and also if you know rational equivalence on the set of effective divisors, then you can reconstruct X. And this implies that uh, if, um, well, if this another theorem, that if K is a, an uncountable algebraically closed field of characteristic zero, 
uh, then uh, the x will be determined by uh, the topological space because you can also get this uh, uh, rational equivalence on divisors. So I uh, will not comment more on this. I just wanted to uh, say that um, the proofs use in particular a refinement of uh, the so-called fundamental theorem of projective geometry. Uh, and in our approach for Milner K theory, uh, we will also um, reduce to an argument uh, uh, from um, uh, projective uh, geometry. So in some sense, uh, these approaches are similar. Um, okay. Um, so now um, um, I'd like to uh, talk about the uh, finitely generated field extensions and Milner uh, K theory. So fix the base field uh, uh, K, which is finite uh, or algebraically closed, V is the characteristic of K. And uh, take two finitely generated fields of transcendence degree at least two. So the first uh, result uh, is that um, if the Milner K rings of F1 and F2 are isomorphic, uh, then the fields are isomorphic. So I will have a better formulation for it just in a couple of slides. So for the moment, it's somewhat um, uh, imprecise. Um, anyways, so if we would like to, um, to, to define phi, uh, it's a map between the Milner K rings, uh, um, then we just need a map between K1, so just the multiplicative groups, and the map between K2, uh, which is compatible with the multiplication, uh, which, uh, okay, from K1, K1 to K2. So this will uh, determine uh, the map between Milner K rings uh, just by the definition of the Milner K theory. Um, okay, so let's, uh, let's see then, okay, so let's see then what, uh, what can we read from the data of K1 Milner and K2 Milner. Okay, in the same setting where we have a, an algebraically close to finite base field and the finitely generated extension of transcendence degree at least two. So, what can uh, the, so the, the Milner K theory uh, determines um, the multiplicative structure just by the definition. Uh, now, in order to determine the field, uh, what remains is the additive structure, right? So we know the multiplication and then, uh, so how to determine the additive structure. And now that the crucial, uh, the, the crucial um, information that is encoded in K2 Milner uh, is the algebraic dependence over the base field. Uh, and this is really why uh, K2 Milner is um, useful for the reconstruction questions. And this is algebraic dependence is uh, what uh, will allow us to reduce to an argument from a classical projective geometry late. Okay, so let's see uh, how, uh, how we can obtain this algebraic dependence from uh, K2. Um, okay, so this is, uh, mm, okay, so we, we will discuss this and let's read it, the, uh, the uh, technical uh, heart of the proof. Uh, and then, as I said, we will uh, do, um, um, we'll recall an, an argument from classical projective geometry um, to say that uh, the uh, multiplicative structure and lines uh, determine the field. Okay, so this is a, a, a sketch of, uh, of, of this uh, theorem on reconstruction from Milner K theory. Um, so, it, at the end, the arguments uh, are um, quite elementary, but uh, uh, tricky. Uh, quite elementary in this two, uh, uh, two last uh, steps and the algebraic dependence actually uses uh, uh, deep results. So we'll uh, uh, do this first. Uh, so first, uh, we um, okay, assume that somebody uh, gave you the multiplicative group of F. Um, and you know also that uh, F uh, is of this type, it's a uh, uh, finitely generated extension uh, over an algebraically close to finite field. 
So you only know this, and now um, you you wondering how to find uh, how to find the field of constants. Um, okay, so here is a recipe. Uh, we can look at the torsion in F uh, star. So what can we say about uh, this uh, torsion element? So either it is finite or it is infinite. So if you have something finite here, then the conclusion is then uh, the K is a finite field uh, and, the, the, and the constants are exactly uh, the, uh, the torsion. Um, now, if it is infinite, uh, then uh, K must be algebraically closed. Uh, and then uh, you recover the field of constants as a divisible subgroup. So uh, the, because the field is algebraically closed, then, um, then, then this uh, multiplicative group is divisible, uh, but uh, other elements um, of uh, this uh, function field over K uh, cannot be infinitely divisible. So that's how you recover uh, the, uh, the, the constants. Um, and this conclusion is that if uh, you have K1 Milner, then uh, you know uh, K star. And so uh, I'm telling this because uh, in the statements that we will have uh, in what follows, we will be looking at uh, this projective space uh, over uh, K um, over K. Uh, and this is um, uh, and this is uh, legitimate because we know how to find uh, the constants from the data of uh, Milner K from, K from K1. Um, okay, so now um, on algebraic uh, dependence. Um, let's uh, look at algebraically close to finite fields K1 and K2 as before, and F1 and F2 are field extensions. Uh, then uh, we need the following definition. If I have a, a map between projective spaces over K1 and K2, we say that it preserves algebraic dependence uh, if two elements in the source are algebraically dependent, if and only if their images in the target are algebraically dependent. So quite a natural definition, and we will use uh, uh, the following notations um, uh, equivalent uh, um, to y, or if we'll, we will be looking at classes, sometimes we'll put bar here and also um, say x bar uh, algebraically uh, equivalent to y bar for uh, the algebraic dependence. Um, okay, uh, now how can we find the algebraic dependence from Milner K theory is uh, uh, explained by uh, this proposition. So I uh, have here uh, an assumption that K is algebraically closed, uh, and I will comment uh, later on this slide uh, what happens for finite field. Uh, so this is uh, the, the, the crucial property that um, encodes the algebraic dependence, is that uh, if you take elements, uh, and elements in F, if you choose L prime different from characteristic of K, uh, then the symbol, the n symbol in, uh, in the Milner K theory is infinitely L divisible, if and only if the transcendence degree of this extension when you add x1, xn, is at most n minus one. Um, so this is what gives you the algebraic dependence uh, uh, from Milner K theory. And so the proof uses uh, um, difficult uh, um, uh, re uh, results. So we use uh, the block cutter conjecture proved by Voivodsky. Uh, if we have degree uh, n equals two, then it's a uh, mercurius Suslin theorem. Um, and uh, it says that if uh, we look at the K theory, Milner K theory mod uh, L to some power, uh, then uh, we find um, uh, so then we have another morphism with uh, Galo homology of uh, uh, the field. Now, if we assume that the transcendence degree of this field over the field of constants, which is algebraically closed in our assumption, so if we assume that uh, this uh, transcendence degree is at uh, uh, most n minus one, then by the cohomological dimension, you have zero for this HM. 
So this tells you that uh, uh, Milner K theory as a, is a, a divisible, as infinitely L divisible. Um, now the other implication is uh, uh, quite straightforward and I just give you the idea is that uh, if you assume that the transcendence degree is N, uh, then you can arrange uh, um, some uh, successive uh, uh, residues, um, the residue maps that will allow you to reduce the case uh, when N equals one. And then N equals one, you'll just uh, uh, once again say that an element uh, in the uh, function field, which is not a constant, is not infinitely L divisible. So this is for the case when the field of constants is algebraically closed. Now over, over finite field, this is also true in degree at most two, uh, where uh, we need to replace L divisible by torsion, uh, and then use the uh, bus state conjecture. It's known for this degree um, in, in this case. Okay, so then uh, the conclusion is that the Milner K theory for us will, uh, will um, encode the algebraic dependence. Uh, so I need some, uh, now I have a better, okay, I have a better um, statement here of uh, first, the first theorem, but I first need some notations. Uh, so um, if K is algebraically closed, uh, then K bar, so K bar um, F uh, will be the Milner K theory, and then you mod out by infinity L divisible elements. And the L, we just fix some a prime, uh, which is uh, different from the characteristic of uh, the base field K. And now if it's finite, then we just uh, uh, mod out by torsion. And now we have a more precise version of uh, how uh, the Milner K theory uh, gives you the field. So we assume that we have two field extensions over this uh, constant, the fields of constants of transcendence degree at least two. Uh, then the statement is that uh, this, um, so the um, isomorphism, the group of isomorphisms uh, of um, F1 and F2 uh, is isomorphic to the um, group of isomorphisms uh, between those uh, reduced Milner K series with these definitions. And where bar here stays by uh, for, for uh, natural quotient by the Zemo two action uh, phi uh, and phi uh, inverse. Um, okay, so we uh, really um, have this uh, somehow functorial uh, statement. Uh, so as a corollary, in particularly, if we take now f one equals f two and equals to f. Uh, then you uh, may be interested uh, in the um, group of birational automorphisms, so in groups of automorphisms of the uh, field F. And as you know, it's, uh, uh, it's in usually tricky and difficult to compute, and uh, it's also interesting uh, um, for rationality questions in particular. And in this case, we provide then a, a point of view uh, on this group of birational automorphisms, uh, by using this uh, um, data from uh, Milner K theory. Um, okay. So, why K theory is a good object uh, from the uh, for the reconstruction results? Well, because we've just seen that it determines the multiplicative structure. Um, and we all, it also de de determines the algebraic dependence. Uh, now, using this, uh, I can now formulate uh, really the main result for this uh, talk. Um, so, in, so, in fact, this, uh, um, this is the result of a, a reconstruction from uh, algebraic uh, de dependence. So, same uh, fields F1, F2. Um, then uh, the group of uh, isomorphisms is the isomorphic to the group of isomorphisms of this projective spaces over the fields of constants um, that preserve algebraic dependence. Okay, so I'm looking at all isomorphisms here that preserve algebraic dependence, uh, modulo again this uh, same Zemo 2 action. Um, okay, now I'd uh, like to comment that uh, it's a more general result it holds 
uh, more generally, when you take uh, regular finitely generated field extensions um, of similar transcendence degree, at least two. So it's not ne necessary here for this second theorem that the fields of constants are algebraically closed or, or finite. Uh, this condition was important uh, in order to recover the algebraic dependence uh, from the Milner case. Okay, so I, I think in the um, remaining uh, part of this talk, uh, I would like to discuss the proof of this, uh, uh, this uh, theorem, this theorem. Um, okay. Um, so there are two parts. Um, so the first part uh, will be to recover, uh, so just to, uh, uh, to remind you, um, mm, to, to remind you uh, how to recover an additive structure. Okay, so here uh, you have already the uh, multiplicative structure and then if you think about how can you prove such a result, uh, then, uh, well, you think what are the known results on uh, uh, recovering the additive structure and then there is this uh, uh, classical uh, projective geometry um, context where um, where the the additive structure is recovered from lines okay so this is what i was uh, saying um, okay let's recall how how this works um, here i take just uh, base fields and some field extensions uh, and I need that this projective space is of dimension at least three. So this is, uh, of course, will be satisfied in our assumptions because uh, this will just uh, remove some very small uh, finite extensions. I need some notations. So if I have a, uh, an element X in the field F, then I will uh, uh, write X bar for its class mod constants. Um, and I also have a notation for a line, a line through X, Y. Uh, is defined in this usual way. Uh, now, the fundamental theorem of projective geometry tells you the following. If you have a group isomorphism uh, between uh, this uh, multiplicative uh, uh, groups uh, that preserves lines, so for any line in the source, there is a line in the target, uh, which is the image of this uh, uh, first line. Then uh, there is a unique isomorphism uh, of fields uh, that induces this isomorphism of uh, multiplicative groups, and this, which also induces an isomorphism on um, on the group of, on the constants. Okay, so this is something that can be covered in uh, you know, in, the, in the graduate algebra class, and uh, uh, and I just want to give you some idea of uh, how, how do you how do you prove such a result. Um, so it is um, uh, an explicit construction, uh, which, for example, works uh, as follows. So you want to define um, a map, uh, a lift, capital F. So for example, take an element which is uh, not a constant. Then look at the line through one and this element. Now what you know is that, uh, okay, this line contains x1 and one plus x. And in this way, you can define the, uh, the lift um, such uh, like the, to be the unique element which satisfies these two properties. So it's a class is the same as the image of um, little phi. And then if you take one plus uh, capital phi, then it's, all, it's the image of uh, phi of one plus x. So this is quite natural and then you can do this. Uh, now you, can, you need also to define what is this map on constants and also to verify that indeed it is uh, um, a field isomorphism. So, for example, uh, I put an example here. Um, if, if you need to check that uh, um, it preserves uh, um, addition, uh, you will use the intersection of lines and, and particularly of this type. If you look at the element one plus x plus y, it lies both on uh, this line and, and on the other line. And then you can just use this to, to, to prove that uh, uh, this property holds. Um, okay, so uh, this requires uh, some work, but it's uh, classical and, uh, and, and it's um, straightforward. Okay, so now um, 
we know that uh, if we have the multiplicative structure and if we have the lines, uh, then this uh, um, uh, fundamental theorem of projective geometry tells you that uh, uh, you can recover the field. Uh, now, um, the, the theorem uh, tells you that you have a morphism that preserves algebraic dependence, uh, then, um, and you want a morphism that preserves lines. So now the question is how to obtain lines from algebraic dependence. Um, okay, so now uh, in order to do this, uh, I'll need a couple of notations. Uh, K is a field, F is a finitely generated field extension with this assumption as before. And the base field just needs to be perfect of P is characteristic. And I will assume that it's algebraically closed in F. Uh, so for an element uh, in this field F, I will uh, use this notation for the algebraic closure uh, of uh, non-zero elements in K of X in, uh, in, uh, in the field F. Okay, so um, yeah, and we will. I will also in, in um, the next slides. I will always uh, write um, use the same notation for an element and for its class uh, mod constant. So hope this uh, will not lead to any uh, confusion. Um, okay, so now um, we take two elements and we want to describe the lines through those two elements in some way that uh, that. Um, only needs uh, some uh, multiplicative uh, structure and algebraic dependence. So here's the typical element on this line. Uh, so now I have some, um, okay, some somehow easy formulas. Um, so first uh, you can uh, write an, this element of the line in this form. So here you multiply by x2 and then you have this difference. Moreover, if you have, uh, if you write the constant C as a ratio of two constants, then again, the same element on the line, you can uh, write it in this uh, way. And again, uh, it is uh, determined um, as a multiplicate, as a product okay, of, of uh, some element Y2 in this, uh, this element, uh, where I have Y1 is X1 minus C1, Y2, X2 minus C2 are on the lines uh, through um, x1 or x2 and one. Okay, so this uh, uh, this is quite elementary, uh, but the crucial uh, point here is that uh, this elements, so this first uh, uh, factors, are of course uh, uh, in this uh, uh, closure of, of the field, and similarly for the element y1 or y2. Uh, so, in other words, uh, uh, with this, we um, represented an element in the line uh, in this way, where we use only multiplication and uh, we use uh, the, the uh, algebraic dependence. Um, okay, so um, let's see uh, if we can. Um, okay, we, if we can find some sort of converse for this. So maybe if we look at the uh, elements of this type, then we can recover lines. Okay, so uh, this is what we know. Okay, so we, we have just uh, established that this element on the line belongs to this intersection. And uh, I will do the notation. It's I determined the, the dependent on x1, uh, y1, uh, and y2. Uh, it's just, uh, this intersection of, uh, of this um, type. Um, okay, and I will also look at the union of such uh, intersections. And the union will be over all elements, y, that are algebraic, this, in this algebraic closure. And I will also mean that they are not uh, um, deep, multiplicatively dependent, mod p, uh, with uh, X. So in, uh, in other words, that uh, there's uh, images in um, um, F star mod P uh, not both trivial and, uh, and uh, not equal if, we take, if you take some uh, powers. Um, okay, so now the question then will be whether I can write the lines through X1 and uh, X2. Uh, maybe it's just 
the same thing as this uh, set, right? Because we, uh, we, uh, we, we've seen that um, this element x1 minus cx2 belongs to this set. Uh, and finally, maybe this is non-zero, then I can write a yi um, as we did here on the line from one and xi. Um, okay, so this is uh, our uh, dream uh, lemma. So you were wondering whether with these notations where we have j and i de determined only in terms of uh, um, uh, of um, algebraic dependence and uh, a multiplicative structure, uh, what they determine the line. So if you have two elements, x1 and x2, then for any element uh, uh, in the set, uh, you can write it as um, some constant times x1 minus uh, constant x2, so on the line. And uh, okay, you have these expressions for yi. Okay, so this is uh, uh, what you uh, can hope uh, to obtain. And this is what you get. Uh, so in general, um, there are more things that uh, you uh, need to take into account. So first, you can only uh, look at the so-called good pairs. I uh, will define it uh, uh, just in a moment. Uh, next, you cannot recover the lines, but you can uh, recover them only up to some m powers where m is an integer that, that does satisfy some, uh, some assumptions. So m is either one or minus one if the characteristic is zero or two, uh, and m is um, between one and p minus one uh, over two, the absolute value of m, uh, if uh, uh, p is uh, greater than two. Um, okay, so you can only recover the lines, uh, um, the, the m's powers of lines, um, and then you also need, so this, this is constant alpha, it's not a constant in the base field, but it is uh, in a, a p power in this uh, algebraic closure. Uh, similarly for this constants ai, the p powers in this algebraic closure. Uh, and also you need uh, uh, some uh, p powers of the ratio of x1, uh, x2 or xi. Uh, so I should say that the idea uh, to represent lines at this uh, intersections uh, of uh, multiplicatively shifted sets here uh, uh, is an idea of uh, Bogomolov and Chinkel. Uh, they proved that for uh, the case of uh, zero characteristic. Uh, in positive characteristic, there are more uh, subtleties that come from uh, the properties of uh, differential forms in positive characteristics and that uh, that's why in particularly you have many p powers uh, that um, arise here. Uh, okay, so now I think I'll, I, will, um, I will comment on what is a good pair and then how to use this, uh, uh, this lemma then to, uh, recover, uh, uh, to recover the lines and, um, and, and okay, so, and to prove uh, theorem two. Uh, so it's a good pair if the first element is regular, um, which means that x1 is transcendental of the base field, and then the extension k of x1 um, as a subfield of f is a regular field extension. Uh, and uh, we also need that the differential forms uh, here are linearly independent over f. Uh, so it's not a big restriction though. Uh, so it can be shown by using a, a Bertini type of argument that if you start with an element, which is not a P power, because otherwise you, the, the, you will have zeros. And so if it's not a P power, then you can always uh, shift um, by an element Y uh, to obtain a good pair. Okay, so, so this is uh, finally not such a big restriction. Um, okay. Um, okay, so now we are ready to, uh, to uh, discuss the proof of uh, theorem two. So I recall the statement here. Uh, so we want to prove that the um, group of isomorphisms of fields can be um, understood by this uh, isomorphisms preserve, preserve an algebraic dependence. Um, okay, so the first step, so we call it, we call it descent one, um, is to uh, take a map that preserves algebraic dependence and then uh, deduce that for 
a map that is in uh, that is in, in, induced for the for the induced map mod p uh, there exists some integer m mm -hmm. such that um, the m's power of this map phi uh, preserves the lines okay preserves the lines also over the uh, p powers of the first field and the second field. Um, okay, so a, a from uh, okay, so if we take this map of phi, we cannot uh, directly um, um, prove that phi itself preserves lines uh, because of this additional complexity in the lemma. So we can only do it mod p and only for some m's power. Okay, so in other words, this set c preserves lines over f i uh, power p. Um, okay, so the strategy for this is um, uh, is just to use the uh, the lemma. Um, okay, so this is what we want to prove, um, and I just have I guess the uh, three steps, so I'm going to display them. Uh, you'd fix two elements, and then you can assume that uh, the the images is a good pair. Uh, this is just because you can shift. Uh, by um, an inverse image of an element which gives you a good pair in the target. And now, what is important is that the description in the lemma is only in terms of the algebraic dependence and the multiplication and multiplicative structure. So, we, in particular, if you take uh, the line of F1 uh, P, um, then uh, uh, Okay, it's it's uh, this multiplication and algebraic dependence are preserved by the map phi, and so the image uh, uh, then will will be um, for the image we can we can apply the the lemma uh, to obtain that it is included in um, in the set J from the lemma and so in the in the line um, over uh, p powers um, as it's written here. And this is for one inclusion, and the other is uh, you is uh, easy. You can just use the symmetry to obtain it in the other direction. Um, okay, so here is where we use the lemma, and where we use that uh, the map preserves uh, the algebraic dependence. Um, I should also say that this constant m a priori uh, depends uh, on the choice of x one and x two in the lemma, and here there is an additional descent argument uh, that uh, proves that. In fact, it does not. So you can choose one M that works uh, here. Um, and now um, the second step is uh, uh, then to uh, use the fundamental theorem of projective geometry, but we can apply it uh, by the first step. Okay, so by the first step, we have lines that are preserved but the lines only over p powers. Okay, so we will apply the fundamental theorem of projective geometry to this small, very small uh, quotients, mod p, and for the m's power uh, of the original map. And then this gives you uh, a unique field isomorphism that, uh, that um, uh, lifts uh, this map phi bar m. Um, okay, and then you need to prove that it actually lifts the original map. Uh, and so there's a residual argument uh, that used the explicit description of uh, this uh, of i the power, power m from the lemma. So this additional descent step uh, will show that m is plus or minus one, and that and then and that that uh, um, okay, so you indeed you recover the phi. So this this map is trivial, which is uh, the eventual difference between um, uh, between this. Um, okay, so this um, allows you to uh, to prove then uh, the uh, theorem. So this gives you the surjectivity, okay, because we proved that any uh, map, uh, any um, group morphism that preserves uh, algebraic dependence can be lifted. And the injectivity is uh, straightforward from the uniqueness um, from projective geometry. And also because if you, um, so here a priori we could not distinguish between uh, phi and its inverse. However, if you lift it, then you can say that uh, um, that uh, phi and phi minus one cannot be both fields, uh, field isomorphisms. 
and so there is only one leaf th that works and this this uh, approves um, the statement of the theorem um, okay so I think I, I have five minutes uh, and I just wanted to uh, just display uh, some uh, details on how to prove this uh, um, uh, technical uh, lemma. Uh, okay, so of course the, uh, there, there are many details to fill in and I, uh, I just want to give you just a general idea of what kind of arguments I used there. Uh, so we take this element i uh, in this intersection. Uh, here y i is in this um, algebraic uh, within this closure of this field in F. Uh, then the idea is to use the uh, differential forms uh, in uh, positive uh, characteristics. So again, there are many details to fill in, why things, uh, when you can, we can do this, why things are non-zero, I'm going to ignore it uh, for just uh, uh, for this talk. Uh, okay, so because if you um, take i mod x, uh, divided by x2, uh, then we are in this um, algebraic closure, uh, or in, in the closure in F. Then for differentials, uh, you can write, express it as uh, some element in this field time dx1 uh, over x2 by x1 over x2, because uh, we have an element in this closure. Um, we can rewrite it. This is just, uh, um, this is straightforward in this way. Okay, this is for the first part uh, with x variables. Now we can do the same thing for y variables um, and have the same expression. Then of course we have the same uh, left-hand side and then we can write the equality and um, put it in, a, in this form where on the left you have something that depends only on dx1 because y1 is also in this um, closure. Uh, on the left, then you have something that depends on the on dx1, and on the right, something that depends on uh, on dx2. But by our assumption that x1 and x2 is a good pair, this intersection is zero. Um, okay, so then you obtain some uh, relations uh, uh, here. Uh, and uh, by a similar argument, taking uh, um, some rewriting and taking some differentials, uh, you obtain a functional equation of this uh, form for y1 and y2, where these uh, um, elements, uh, so again, you have uh, one element in uh, this field, another one in the field when you um, take a look at x2, the intersection here is just only constants. And then you did use then um, these ratios are represented by an integer um, m, and that's why you have also conditions uh, on m being between one and p minus one, not two, because it's just a lift of an element in fp. Uh, now you have uh, these equalities, and then if you look at that, for example, f1 over one minus f1 here, then you can just rewrite it. This, just really rewrite this, uh, this fraction as uh, in this form. Now this is uh, some sort of differential equation uh, and in uh, the field of uh, characteristic P, uh, you, you obtain that um, Z1 mod X1 M is a P power. And that's it because going back and writing, okay, what is Z1? Uh, okay, the one is something like this. And what is F1? F1 is uh, in, in, in this form. So you go back in the notations and you obtain that the m's power of y1 can be written in this way. And so this is already uh, quite close to uh, what was the statement um, in the statement of the lemma. Uh, okay, because we have here that m's power of y1 uh, is uh, up to p powers on the line through m, m's power of x1 and um, Okay, so this definitely takes more than one slide, but I just wanted to illustrate uh, what kind of arguments uh, you used. I think then uh, my time is over, and um, so thank you so much uh, for your attention. Any questions?
I, I see the question. Is it uh, maybe some connection with highly dimensional class field theory by Kato, Parshin? Because Milner case theory is a key, uh, crucial argument in highly dimensional class field theory. Uh, yeah, it's it's a uh, it's a natural and uh, very good question. Uh, uh, so we haven't uh, looked at uh, like for now to find uh, um, to find some precise connections, but uh, but definitely yeah, there should be some. Well, thank you very much, Leona, for the nice talk, and so we'll proceed with the talk with Bogomolov in three thirty New York time. Thank you. Thank you.